You want to finish what you started? You came to the right place. Them girls that you came with, you might have to part with. Depending on how this thing shakes. Wabatosa, Kenosha, Economowak is in the house. Okay, I meant to do this video when I had a suit on and I was in my office as opposed to wearing a wrinkly Wisconsin t-shirt, but I forgot, so bear with me here. Um, we are a day after the inauguration here in D.C. Uh, D.C., by the way, is just fully on lockdown. I mean, it looks like, uh, like at the end of The Dark Knight Rises when they have the bridges all blocked off by military vehicles and we have thousands of National Guard troops here after January 6th. I mean, this is this is what we're dealing with here in D.C. That's a topic for another day. I want to address something that <clears throat> was always a, a, um, a subject of interest to me over the last four years, and, and that's the question of executive orders. I used to do this thing where I think Politico had an ongoing series where they would report, you know, five things Trump did while you weren't looking. And I used to go primarily to conservative audiences and sort of read off this list. And it was all stuff we as conservatives loved, right? It was like pro-life policies, this and that. But my point was a subversive one. It's actually, this should concern you if you're a conservative, because anything that's done purely by executive order, or executive fiat, can be undone in the future. And really, it just reflects the fact that Congress is not doing its job. And a lot of the successes Trump had we're undoing the things that Obama did purely by executive order, in some cases, deliberately sidestepping congressional approval. Uh, so, for example, probably the best example of that is the Iran nuclear deal, uh, which I strongly opposed. I thought it was bad for our interests, for our allies in the Middle East. I know the other side disagrees, but regardless of what you think about the Iran nuclear deal, the JCPOA, the best way to ensure that it actually lasts longer than a couple of years would have been to submit it to Congress as a treaty to be approved, ratified by Congress, thereby making it difficult, if not impossible, for a future administration just to snap their fingers or put out an executive order and get rid of it. Similarly, right now, what Biden is doing, uh, effectively canceling the Keystone Pipeline project, which is terrible for Wisconsin, hundreds of millions of dollars in economic losses for Wisconsin, Thousands of jobs, likely 2,000 jobs for Wisconsinites. For working class families in Wisconsin, it's going to be a disaster because it's going to drive up the cost of energy, the cost of oil at the pump. It's going to make us less energy independent as Americans. Um, so to me, obviously, that's a bad idea. But all of this is done through executive order, and it just results in us ping-ponging back and forth between wildly different interpretations of what's best for the country and that creates absolute chaos. It creates um, economic losses. It creates instability. Um, it causes our allies to look at us more skeptically. It's just a weird way for America where the whole you know, way this thing started was in opposition to a king and a desire that we should govern ourselves and not have a single person be able to do everything on a whim or through fiat. Uh, it's an odd thing in 2021 that so much just comes down to executive orders. And, you know, this is what the Biden administration is doing right now with 15, likely 17 executive orders. Another one rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement. And again, reasonable people can disagree about whether the Paris Climate Agreement actually meaningfully impacts climate change. Um, I don't think it does. But if you believe it's important, then submit it to Congress to be ratified as a treaty. Don't just do it purely through executive order because it's not going to last at all. Mexico City policy uh, is going to be uh, undone through executive order, um, or, which I think is terrible. Um, but again, I know people can disagree about it. But the point is when so much in a world where Congress is weak, Congress doesn't do its job, Congress doesn't actually legislate, We've allowed the executive branch to become more and more and more powerful, which means presidents so often try and cement their legacy via executive orders without fully understanding that they aren't cementing anything. They're building a legacy as a castle of sand, and it will wash away the next time a different president who has a different set of policy views 
comes into office. So I've written more about this. I'm a broken record about this. If you want to hear more about how Congress can reclaim its role and get away from executive orders, which do not bring the country closer together, it screws up this whole idea of unity, go to How to Salvage Congress, an article I wrote at The Atlantic. Thanks for listening to my diatribe. The dude.